Roland Dice. Here. Vice Mayor Mike Crockett. Here. Alderman Mike Hansel. Here. Alderman Bobby Knight. Here. Alderwoman Lou Anna Ottinger. Here. Alderman Steve Smith. Here. City Attorney Terry Hurst. Here. City Administrator James Fish. Here. Uh, Mayor, if I could, just for a moment, please. Uh, as you might, as you know, uh, City Recorder Tina Matthews is not here tonight, and this uh, I think this is actually the first meeting she has missed since her appointment. Uh, for those that don't know, she was in a pretty bad automobile accident a week ago yesterday. Uh, broke her right arm and uh, bruised her up pretty bad, and. Uh, she missed a few days of work. She started coming back slowly, doing a lot of work from home and, and trying to work with, you can imagine, trying to work with your one hand being your weak hand. And um, so she's, she asked uh, uh, to be excused for tonight and uh, I let her go on home. She worked all day today until five o'clock and I, I, I let her go home. And uh, of course, Regina will do a fine job uh, sitting in for her, but just for the record on why she is not here. Thank you. Was Coach her uh, driver's ed teacher? Uh, <laughs> no. No, but he may have been the one that hit her. Remember, you're in that class, Steve. Don't be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. A pack it has been inserted into your package. Uh, for regular session March 9th, 2021. Are there any corrections, additions, deletions? If not, we'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes as presented. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion on the board to approve the minutes as presented. It's been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by aye. Aye. And any nay, like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Proclamations and or recognition of citizens by the mayor. Tonight we do have a, a recognition of a citizen. Most of you know the gentleman that just presented this, his uh, tape recorder <laughs> to my desk, Mr. Ray Snader. I've been told that he has been around here longer than, than most of us, something like 42 years. Is that right, Ray? A little over 42 years. September would be 43. But, who, but who's counting, right? <laughs> okay. But we do have a, have a uh, certificate of recognition for your service to the city of Newport and to, to this council. Uh, we're, I think uh, <coughs> your boss would like to say a few words also. So if he would come up. Where do you want to Which one's boss? But we got to <laughs> Ray, since 1978, you have covered approximately 510 city council meetings. And in addition to that, um, community meetings, budget meetings, and a whole slew of other things. And that's just for the city. Uh, not even talking about county business that you've covered. You are an icon in this county. You're like a fixture here. And this being your very last city council meeting, we just wanted to recognize you for your commitment and your dedication to our community and to the city of Newport. And thank you, and we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you, appreciate it very much. And on behalf of the city of Newport and our Board of Mayor and all of us, and all our staff would like to present you with this certificate of recognition, Ray. Thank Congratulations, you. and we wish you the best in every in all your future endeavors. Thank you, Mayor, very much. Okay. Hey, all, of, all the board members, how much do they appreciate you? What you've done? Thank you. Us a lot. Thank you very much. Let me say that I appreciate this first off. Secondly, I appreciate everybody that's in this room. The community has been very, very helpful to me in uh, doing the things that I have done covering the many, many 
meetings and rapes and murders and trials, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I appreciate uh, everybody's support and help. Uh, I don't. The chief isn't here, is he? No, he's uh, on vacation. Oh, okay, okay. I was going to apologize to the chief for the many times I've called and texted him at five o'clock in the morning to find out information for my news at six. So uh, I, I, I did want to say that. Going back to the first weekend that I was in Newport after I graduated from school at UAB, I came up here, got here on a Saturday and uh, Sunday the radio station signed on the air as a brand new radio station in September of 1978. Uh, I was thinking back to that first day that I covered news in Newport. I had never ever heard of moonshine before <laughs> in my life. <laughs> but that day, one of my stories was the arrest of a fella for making moonshine. And I remember distinctly of one of the police officers showed me moonshine. It looked like water to me. But he said, this is how it works. He poured it on the sidewalk <laughs> and, and lit a match to it <laughs> to show me the difference between water and moonshine. Uh, at any rate, that police officer was a patrolman at the time, and his name was Clay Webb, <laughs> who many of you remember went on to be chief uh, of the police department. But uh, the bottom line is I appreciate everybody's help. Uh, the governor knows Sylvie and I have bought a home on a mountaintop. It's a cabin with a guest house in Luray, Virginia, very close to our daughter's home. She's been pushing and pushing and pushing for us to move. Uh, I just closed on the farm in Bybee, and so next Friday will be my last day covering the news here. But thanks again, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is communications from the city administrator. Um, I'd like to uh, also uh, remind everybody this week, it's uh, National Telecommunicators Week. That's uh, a week set aside for the uh, public safety dispatchers and uh, state preferred to call telecommunicators now. So this is a week to uh, remember them and uh, keep them in your thoughts. Speaking of dispatchers, I was... Uh, I was dispatching at the sheriff's department in 78 when Ray came here and I, I remember quite clearly him coming and uh, he, he was a different kind of a, a fella that, that nobody had ever dealt with before or somebody that was an actual aggressive reporter and so they liked to pull jokes on him and they were bad uh, to go if they saw him coming up the sidewalk they'd run out the door and run and jump in a, a patrol car and turn the blue lights on and shoot out of town. And he'd come in, what's happening, what's happening, what's happening? <laughs> and nothing, nothing was happening. They were doing that to mess with him. So uh, he, he was the brunt of a lot of jokes when he first came, but he was a real good sport. But they liked to, they liked to make it hard on him. Uh, thank you for your, thank you for your help through the years. Well, thank, thank you. I, I, you're welcome, and uh, you know I tried to tell those guys uh, back at the time, especially some of the older guys uh, at that time. And I don't want to get into a big long war story, but at that time we had just uh, four years earlier come out of the fee grabbing system for those older folks that remember what that is, and what that was is that um, there weren't uh, salary deputies until 1974. Prior to that, they were they got paid fees that were paid off of the arrests they made. Uh, the fines and court costs paid their salaries, and so uh, the state did away with that and 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 changed that in '74. And so uh, those older guys, there were still guys there that had worked under that system, and they had a different kind of mindset. 
and they didn't they, they didn't always appreciate uh, Ray's aggressiveness and didn't really understand it and so you know I, I tried to, to get across to them that look you know he's he's just doing a job you know he's doing what he's paid to do he's just trying to do his job and and I think over time that pretty much everybody come to accept him in the role that he, he was trying to play I don't know that uh, Sheriff Stenson did. Uh, they stayed at odds a little bit, and I don't know that he ever really <laughs> accepted him all that great. But uh, but for the most part, I think about everybody did. And so, thank you. You're welcome, Ray. I, I, I did what I could do for you, brother. Thank you very much. Okay. COVID update. Uh, since last meeting, uh, we've had a, a few uh, employees be in quarantine. We've had one positive case uh, uh, one employee that was pretty sick we were worried about about them uh, thought they were going to end up on a ventilator they were hospitalized for a couple for a week or two and uh, they didn't make it onto the ventilator and we were really glad of that uh, they are now back home and hopefully we'll be back to work by May 12th that's the target date right now but we did have one employee that got got pretty sick, and uh, we're, we're thankful that uh, that they're back home and, and on the men now because uh, it, we were really worried about them for a few days. Uh, as far as the vaccine, the vaccinations go, 35% uh, of our employees have had at least one dose or more. We we are trying to encourage our people to get vaccinated. Uh, I spoke to the police department last Wednesday about uh, about trying to up the rate within that department, and you know it's it's a hard sell. And I think the, the the department that had the 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 person to get really sick that that, that motivated a few of them to go and a few more of them to go get vaccinated, and so I, I'm hoping over time that more of them will. Uh, you know, some places are mandating that. I don't recommend that. I won't do that unless you all instruct me that that's the way you, that you want to go. But I'm not going to make people get it. That's a personal choice. And uh, I've had my first shot, and hopefully we'll get my other one in about a week and a half, and, and we'll go from there. But I know the second shot is the one everybody dreads. You know, we talk about it every Monday morning at our department head meeting. And the mayor has reported he's 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 very good with uh, bringing us statistics, and he has reported that one of the big problems that they have had with the rollout, with, especially with the two dose uh, versions, is that folks not coming back for their second shot. They get the first shot and don't come back for the second. And I personally think that a lot of that is brought on because of the reported side effects that folks are having with the second dose. And they, they make it through that first dose and maybe their arm gets a little sore but they don't get sick. And then they kind of, everybody listen to everybody tell these uh, horror stories about how sick they got with the second dose. And then they think, well, I'm, maybe I'll just skip that second dose and not go back. But we are encouraging our people to, to, to do that if they don't then you know that that's that's their choice but uh, right now it's at 35 percent that that we that we've had we have uh, placed on the table in front of each of you a manila folder uh, or envelope uh, inside that is our proposed budget for the 21 22 fiscal year it's that time uh, of year again we we put a lot of time into it nobody near as much as Tina she uh, worked very closely with each department head to, to go through with their requests trim those down and and then after she gets through with them she brings them to me and then I say if I need to if I want to trim them any farther some we did some we didn't and uh, I feel there's something in the budget for everybody each department got something but no department got everything they asked for and that's true every year and of course you know uh, i've been on that side of the coin it's their job to get all they can get for their department and i don't grudge that i don't grudge anybody asking for for stuff for their department that's if they're not doing that then they're not looking out for their department these you know, the department heads if they're not asking for stuff we just have to determine can can we afford it and do we need it and do we need it right now 
because a lot of times we'll push something down another year or two. We'll say, well, we'll come back to that next year or the next year or whatever and try to get by one more year or whatever. So uh, this is our proposed budget. We've got a lot of things uh, spelled out in there that are in the budget. Uh, it, you know, it'll be up to you guys if you want to have a workshop in May. Uh, traditionally, if we have a workshop, we have it the first uh, Tuesday in May, and I believe that's May 4th. Now last year, uh, you all opted not to have a, a workshop. You were satisfied with what you had seen in the budget, and we moved forward with the first reading at the regular meeting in May. And that's what we will do this year if, if you all decide that you don't need a workshop. You can either let me know, let the mayor know, only the mayor can call a workshop, uh, but I'll, if you tell me, I'll pass it on to him, or you can tell him directly uh, if you want a workshop, and he'll, uh, he'll move accordingly to that. But uh, between now and, and then, at any time, uh, when you're looking at this, if you have any questions, call me, call Tina, call if it's about a specific department, call the department head, um, you know, let them defend their budget. I've had to, over the years, I've had to defend plenty of them. So uh, they should be fully prepared to defend their budgets. And so, but we want you uh, to have a clear understanding of everything that's in there. So if you have any questions at all, you can call us and, and we'll help you with it. Now, one thing that, we, that I have, have put, put down there is this sheet. And this is from Keep Cock County Beautiful. Currently, we appropriate $3,750 for Keep Cock County Beautiful, uh, a, an appropriation uh, for them each year that they use as they see fit. They have requested that we double that appropriation in the coming budget. We don't do that without you all telling us to do that. We put in whatever we gave them last year on any of these uh, outside agencies that we donate to. Excuse me. So if you all decide you want that in there, let us know, and we will get that in before the, the reading of the budget in May. And so I'll, I, you know, I'll, I will leave that to you all to consider and let us know if you want to leave it at, the, at its current funding level or if you want to increase it by double or do you want to increase it less. I mean, just because they asked for it to be doubled, I'm sure they would be happy with anything. But again, that's, that's in y'all's court. On, on what you want to do on that. We uh, currently, we this past week, we received notification from uh, public entity partners, which used to be TML, Tennessee Municipal League. Uh, that is our insurance uh, provider for workers' comp liability and property. And uh, we were notified that we were going to get a rebate of $56,397 this year. So that's uh, money that, that we're going to be getting back from them to go back into the general fund. So we, we were real tickled with that and wanted to share that information with you. Uh, just another quick thing on a personal note. Um, today is my eighth anniversary of being in this position. Um, just so happened to fall that way. And uh, I just want to say that, uh, that eight years has went by really fast. And uh, it's, it's amazing how quick time goes by and gets away from you. But, uh, you know, it's been the, the toughest job I ever had, but it's also been one of the most fulfilling jobs I've ever had. And uh, it, it's an honor and a privilege to serve for eight years. And I, I appreciate the, the opportunity that, that y'all have given me and uh, the way you guys have worked with me. It wouldn't be the job it is without the support of you all because uh, you know, the, the city, it don't matter how good an idea I or some of the staff have, it, it doesn't happen without y'all's support. And secondly, uh, it doesn't happen without the staff either. I'm not a one-man show. The success we've had, uh, I attribute a lot of that to the staff. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that you're only as good as the people you have around you, and I always encourage the department heads 
to evaluate and try to get the absolute best person they can when they have these openings to fill because your people will make you or break you. I, I firmly believe that. But I just wanted to make a brief note of that and say thank you and uh, we'll keep chugging at it. Uh, that's all I got, Mr. Mayor. I think the Vice Mayor had asked to make a comment. Well, I just wanted to thank all the department heads I don't think people realize what they go through with what they do and if you don't go and see what they do and talk to them and stuff you don't know and I just wanted to tell all of the department heads I think all of them here but Maurice and that y'all done a real good job very organized very vetted and really appreciate the job y'all do and I've come to my all of us thank you uh, I'd just like to say as far as James goes I've known him pushing 40 years now I guess uh, I think he was probably one of the best decisions that uh, the council that Bobby and uh, coach and I were on originally that was one of the best decisions we made because uh, him and his staff helped drive us out of the quagmire that uh, we were drawn into for a number of years um, and you can look at any of these publications that we get his type of job uh, gets changed like socks routinely and uh, for him to be in a position like this for eight years I think that speaks fairly highly of him and his staff. Thank he you. makes us look good. I try. I do the best. You can't make him look have, good. I can't. <laughs> yeah, these are what you got to work with. Mr. Mayor, after everybody quit talking, <laughs> he used to come to the fire department about five o'clock in the morning he do we kept our reports and all the lights be out and he'd sneak in there and get their reports and go through them make sure if anything they put on the and I usually heard him come in, you know, he come in back we had one door we didn't lock. I don't know how he found out about it. <laughs> he come in that door. And I told him one night, I said, You need to probably little memo went to all these other guys and I said, you want to sleep with a gun on it? <laughs> and he in the pocket and another mattress and they all unloaded on me. So we had a big life out of that. Yeah. Everybody then knew somebody coming sneaking through at five o'clock in the morning it was race night. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? I think I first heard Ray's voice when I was a sophomore in high school. So that's uh, <laughs> been quite a while ago. Back in the day, that's how we found out there's going to be a school in Cobb County. <laughs> WLIK or WNBC, there wasn't any internet or anything of that nature. So uh, you listen very closely. Anyone else? Well, if not, we have the next item on the agenda is appointment of boards, commissions, or committees. Item A is consideration of appointment to the Newport Utilities Board. Mr. Claude Gatlin's term. I would like to appoint Dr. Emily Eisenhower to that position. Okay. Second. All right, we have to point, uh, a motion to appoint Dr. Emily Eisenhower to the Newport Utility Board. It has been properly seconded. Are there any questions to the motion? Hearing none, please signify your acceptance by aye. Aye. And any opposed, like side. Hearing none, motion carries. Item B is discussion of appointment to Fire Civil Service Board, Kenneth Calfee's term, appointed by Fire Civil Service. Uh, Mayor, the, um, the board met, the Civil Service Board met, and they appointed Mike Overholt to uh, that, that that's the one that's filled by the board and uh, they voted to uh, appoint Mike Overholt to fill out that term and he has actually already attended his first meeting and uh, and they're moving forward with him do we so need we a just need to approve that no sir we just that all we need to do is just announce it okay. I'd like to comment on uh, Kenneth Caffey Congrat not congratulating but Tell him thank you for all the years he served on that board. He did a real good job and they really liked him. So I'd like to say something to Kenneth Kelly. Okay, any other comments? All right, item seven. Reports from committees, members of council, and other offices. Uh, the only item on there is for Tanner Preservation Alliance. Uh, not to the report, Mayor. Uh, 
I would like to say that as I passed by uh, earlier this afternoon, I noticed the guys were out there striping the, the lot, and it, it makes a big difference. You, you wouldn't think just painting some lines on the parking lot would make that much of a difference, but it really does. Uh, so I think there's some folks that I've had several complaints over the last few days about it not being done, so I was glad to see it happen today. The landscaping looks really nice. Too. Yes. We still have a little ways to go with that building. There are a few other things that need to be done, but so far, so good. Really looking forward to it opening fully. All right, item eight is consideration of second reading of ordinance number 2021-01, budget amendment for the city of Newport. And Mayor, I'll read the caption of that ordinance and <coughs> your anchor to ordinance 20. 21-01, an ordinance of amending the annual operating budget and capital program of the city of Newport, Tennessee, fiscal year 2020-2021. Need a motion, Mayor. Yes, we need a motion. Make a motion. Second. All right, we have a motion on the board to approve consideration of second reading of ordinance number 20. 21-01 budget amendment for the city of Newport. It has been properly seconded. We will need a roll call vote. Arman Hansel? Yes. Arman Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Profit? Yes. The motion carries. New business is consideration of first reading of ordinance number 2021-02, amending the privilege of occupancy in hotel motel tax. And may have the caption of that ordinance is ordinance number 2021-02, an ordinance to amending the city of Newport Municipal Code, Title IX, business, peddlers, solicitors, etc. Chapter 8, hotel or motels, Section 808, Privilege Tax Levy Use. Uh, Mayor, th this is something that we've uh, had on the back burner for some time. Many years ago, when the hotel motel tax was first enacted, we were uh, appropriated the ability to impose up to a 5% occupancy tax if we so chose. At the time, the, the debate went back and forth uh, whether to do 4% or 2%. And ultimately, uh, because the, the funds have to be used for tourism-related expense, the city was only able at that time to come up with a uh, justification of only 2%. And so uh, the original plan was to do 4%. But because of that, because they couldn't justify 4%, they backed it down to 2%. And what we are recommending and asking is that you all go now consider returning to that 4% amount because we can now justify that due to the Tanner Building and the use of the Tanner Building for uh, the uh, welcome center and museum that we plan to put in there and uh, we have crunched the numbers on the proposed amount that it will bring in uh, and on the expense that, that we will have and those numbers come together very nicely and so uh, we think that the welcome center will be an asset to the tourism in the county and uh, the funds generated will go to fund that and so we see that as a legitimate expense for use of the, ho the, of the hotel motel tax increase. That is the whole purpose of it. That's the reason the state allows you to impose that, is to help you to promote the region in tourism. And, uh, and so that's why you have to spend that money on tourism-related expenses. And we can now 
justify that. And so in order to pay for that uh, by the people passing through, as opposed to the property tax uh, payers, then we would ask that the hotel motel tax be increased from two to four percent. That still leaves a one percent cushion that we're not asking for because again, it is, it is not justified. If we can't justify it, we're not going to ask for it. And But we can justify the two percent additional on top of the, the two percent currently in play. And that way we'll be able to fund the, the, uh, the Welcome Center uh, and the museum and we do, uh, we are uh, confident that, that all that is justified. We've researched it very thoroughly and uh, we, we just, we feel like that's the way to go. Okay, the presentation was a pleasure of the board. Motion to approve ordinance 2021-02 with the 4% increase. Second. Okay, we've got stereo seconds on that one. So, <laughs> um, we, so we, we have most on the board to approve that hotel motel tax from 2% two, two to 4%. It has been properly seconded. Please roll call vote. Alderman Hansel? Yes. Alderman Knight? Yes. Alderwoman Ottinger? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Prophet? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries. Item B is consideration of resolution number 2021-02 authorizing the city of Newport to open a new bank account for the American Rescue Act grant at Newport Federal Bank. Uh, Mayor, uh, I'll address that since Tina's not here. Um, we are in line. Uh, I'm sure all of you have heard about all this stimulus money that, that's coming down the pike. Uh, and every time you get some of it, you have to create a dedicated bank account for it. You can't co-mingle it with any other funds. And so uh, it's, it's spelled out early in, the, in the, the documentation that you get on it. Must have dedicated bank account. And so this is what this is for. It's for some of the stimulus money that's coming. We have to, cre we have to create another bank account to put it in and only, only you all can, can do that. So we're just asking that you give us a, a, the, the go ahead to create another account for stimulus money to go in. Yes. To make a motion, we go ahead and create another account for the stimulus money. I'll second that. Okay, we have motion on the board. It's been properly seconded for consideration of resolution number 21, 2021-02, authorizing the city of Newport to open a new bank account for the American Rescue Act grant at Newport Federal Bank. As I said, it's been properly seconded. Do we need a roll call? Okay, we need a um, motion to approve. It's been seconded. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. Item C is consideration of the annual highway maintenance contract between the state of Tennessee and the city of Newport. Mayor, we've, we've been uh, involved in this since 1994. And basically the, the state reimburses us for any maintenance that we do along the state highway corridors inside the city of Newport. And uh, we, you know, we fix potholes, we sweep it, uh, we help with the snow removal and uh, other maintenance issues that come along. We, other than paving, we don't do that. But this is just, uh, just the maintenance of it, not the, not the major stuff like that. But uh, we've been doing it since 1994 and uh, it's worked out really well. And so it's just one of the, it has to be renewed every year. I was on that first group that ever started molding to the end states of Paris, first one that started meeting. Okay, you heard, you heard, heard the uh, presentation, we need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. I'll take a second. Okay, we have <coughs> made a motion to approve the consideration of the annual highway maintenance contract between the state of Tennessee and the city of Newport. It has been properly seconded. Please uh, signify acceptance by aye. Aye. And nays like sign. Hearing none, motion carries. 
Item D is discussion of liquor stores in the city of Newport. Okay, we, we spoke about this at uh, last month's meeting about how you all wanted to move forward. I ask you to each individually get in contact with me and discuss what you wanted to do. And uh, the consensus of the board was that you wanted to stay with the current number of liquor stores, which is three, and not increase the number. So that means we have currently one opening for uh, someone to apply for. And of course the, the, the catch 22 was you were gonna, we were gonna have to only pick one person to send to Nashville. So uh, the interest level had been at like four or five people that had expressed interest in applying. So we had to have a uh, elimination process that would allow us to pick one person to, to fill out the application for certificate that we would, would then approve and send on to Nashville. Because once we approve the certificate and send it on to Nashville, it's out of our hands. So Nashville doesn't, get, doesn't pick who gets it, we have to. So we had to, we had to have a process of elimination. So I drew up, I took the actual application for the hotel, or shoot, I'm sorry, I'm reading that, um, for the liquor license. And uh, I put a copy, we've got a copy in your book, uh, and it's this right here. And it's kind of like, a, uh, it's, it's a, I've got to call it an application for an application, because that's basically what it is. Um, but it uh, would be like in a kind of a resume format. Anyone interested would, would have to fill this out, the deadline. Uh, to turn something in is 12 noon Tuesday May 4th and then we would uh, you all would pick who who you want to apply at the May 11th council meeting we, we have copies of this I know there were folks that were going to come tonight that were interested they can take this with them tonight uh, we, we anticipated that and have copies available but the the, the information required will be name of applicant, any co-owners or investors, addresses and phone numbers, the location and description of the building, the proposed name of the business, the projected opening date timeline, and any other information including letters of recommendation that the applicant wishes to include. Now all this information come directly off the application, the other, the main application that the person that you all choose to send to Nashville will have to provide. So this is nothing that we came up with uh, just off the top of our head. This came directly out of that, op at that application. So if they can't provide that information for this, they won't be able to provide it for the other one. So we've already had somebody say, well, you know, uh, I, I, I've not got a place picked out yet. Well, you, you can't fill out the other application until you have a place picked out. So uh, I, I, I felt like that was pertinent information uh, that we needed to know uh, where they intend to put it. Uh, even if they've not uh, picked the exact spot, they could at least give you a rough idea and, you know, uh, exit 432 or you know the east side of town and Eastport or something they you know, may not be able to give you an exact physical address but they can give you a, a general location but uh, that's what that's what that I came up with to, for you guys to to look at to make your decision on who you wanted to pick to fill out the big application and, and have to pay the $500 filing fee because that was one of the things we wanted to, to avoid was having all these folks, four, five, six folks that were interested in applying, having all of them put in a $500 filing fee and only one of them getting chosen. And so we did, we went through all this to, to try to help people not, not have to pay $500 to get turned down. So this is a way to have a process of elimination, whereas only the one that you choose to fill out the big application, uh, where you have to do all the background checks and all that stuff, uh, and pay the $500 filing fee. So uh, based on the conversations that I, I had with you all, uh, that's what I came up with. It just looks fine. Uh, I think probably there needs to be some additional information in terms of the location, description of the building. Aren't there some restrictions about where that building has to be located, around schools or churches or whatever? 
Well, I think that's why they ask you for the location because the you can't put it. I'm, I'm sure I, I, I'm not positive, but I wouldn't think you could put it then so many feet of a school or a church. Yeah. yeah. That that is on the main application though. That yeah. Information. Right. Okay. Well, it's the same thing as on here. The you know the location of it. Yeah. Because like I say, some I, we already had one that 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 kind of complained about that said they didn't know exactly where they were going to put it yet. Well, you have to know or you can't apply. You, right. can't, you can't fill out the application that goes to Nashville uh, if you don't know where you're going to put it. So that's, that's why I put that on here because that is required in the official uh, application. So yes, I mean, to go along with what you're saying, yeah, they have to be able to tell you where it is. Yeah. Okay. So that, I don't know where I'm going to put it, won't, won't work. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions? Okay. And item D. Then. Well, I need uh, if that's if everybody's if you don't mind, Mayor, if everybody's in agreement with that, I'd like for to have the vote to yeah, say, yeah, vote. that's the procedure we're going to follow. That's just that is my recommendation. Okay. But I'd like for the council to accept that recommendation. That authorizes me to move forward with it. Okay. Okay. You've heard. Uh, the administrator's presentation. What's the board's pleasure? I make a motion to accept James's recommendation on the process. Second. Okay, we have a motion then to accept the recommendation. <coughs> it has been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by aye. 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 Nose like sign. Thank you. Hearing none, motion carries. And we will be posting that in the paper. Uh, we will be putting it online. Uh, both at the web page and on our Facebook page so uh, to get the word out there to where everybody that may, may be interested in that will know what the process is and the timeline okay all right item uh, number 10 is item bids purchases and expenses mm -hmm. and item a is consideration of bids for storage buildings for the city of Newport mayor these uh, when we bought the AT&T property we, um, uh, one of the things that w we wanted to do was put uh, some storage buildings on there that would be uh, sp specific for each department. There's already uh, some space there uh, that, um, that's already been designated out to the ones that, that needed the most. And so uh, there were still, we needed three more small uh, storage buildings so each department could have a dedicated space to to store stuff up there in a secure it's all inside the fence but we wanted them to be able to lock it inside the, inside a building and that way this will allow us to do that we only got one one bid uh, and uh, that was old hickory buildings and that was for $5,264 per unit. And this, this is the one that's located up in Bright Town. It is local. And how many units? Three. Three. Is this for the storage of paper records? Yes. Well, they can put other stuff in it if they need to, but it's, that's, primarily that's what we're trying to put up here at this location inside is records. Yes. And so these buildings will be able to regulate uh, temperatures I guess right? no no they won't uh, yeah these won't now the other t the, some of the one you know some of the others will okay. like the police department theirs will uh, this is but these three will not they won't have like heat and air in them uh, the police department building does it's the it's actually the police department building is the biggest building up there and uh, and it's got it has heat in there in it and uh, one of the other buildings that we're going to utilize for city hall has heat and iron it and so but these three will not the main thing is just being able to keep most things dry it's you know it's uh, it, because like that's like now uh, ba they're back in the back and uh, a lot of there's no heat or air back there now the units are back there, but they're not heating or cooling that that section of the building. Thank you. Okay, you've heard, you've heard the presentation. Uh, consideration of bids for the storage building for the city of Newport, three units at five thousand two hundred sixty-four dollars per unit. 
We need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. I'll second. All right, we have a motion to approve. It's been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by aye. 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 And nays like sign. <coughs> Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Uh, I think we probably need to have a roll call on that one. I think we're just mayors like we don't have any parties. Okay, all right. That makes Virginia happy. <laughs> <laughs> Consideration of bids for two zero turn mowers for parks and recreation. These are the two mowers that uh, are replacing a 17 year old grasshopper at the uh, city park and of course uh, for the amount of money that we put in for replacement we're able to buy two because of the uh, uh, technology that has come in with the with the zero turns and the transmissions and all have reduced the price quite a bit so we're able to buy two of those mowers to replace one of those grasshoppers You said the information is in your packet. Are there any questions? Yes. So the $12,799.98. And you heard the presentation then? What's the board's pleasure? I'll make a motion to approve that purchase. Second. All right, we have a motion on the board to approve the purchase of two zero turn mowers to replace a 17-year-old grasshopper. Mm -hmm. It has been properly seconded. Please signify your acceptance by aye. 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 And, and no's like sign. <coughs> Hearing none, motion carries. Hey, I'm just enjoying not having to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you did talk a lot this meeting. <laughs> uh, consideration of bids for fencing for the Newport City Park maintenance area. Yes, uh, this is uh, one of the critical things that we think that we need to, uh, to implement at our city park is that we have, we have seven bays over there and a new maintenance shop and we have no way to protect our equipment. So, uh, you know, we all understand that fencing keeps an honest man out. But we have to protect our equipment. We have gators, we have mowers, we have tractors, we have trucks. You know, just recently, um, I think one of our employees discussed with one of our aldermen that what had happened to one of our trucks already where they have cut the Cadillac converters out of it. And so uh, hopefully this is a way for us to protect our equipment. And of course we did bid, it is in the budget. Um, and uh, I think the, you have the information posted in your book. I want to tell you what a good job I think y'all have done. And you know, I've been over there and looked and watched what you've done and you're very well organized. You've got what, 85 acres of land to mow? We take care of 85 acres for the city of Newport. People don't realize that, how much y'all do. But I appreciate your job. The only thing we don't do is bins mediums. So we're, we're real happy that doesn't come our way, Mr. Fincham. <laughs> okay. Got two bids. Yes, we did get two bids, but the lower bid is, uh, I think, Shoemakers. Shoemaker. Yeah, it's almost ten thousand dollars less. Yes. Okay. All right, you've heard the presentation. What is the board's pleasure? I make a motion to accept the lower bid with the shoemakers. Second. All right, we have a motion on the board to accept the bid of shoemakers for fence and, and uh, at the maintenance shop for City of Newport. It has been properly seconded. We will need a roll call for this one, Regina. Arman Hansel? Yes. Arman Knight? Yes. Otter Woman Ottinger? Yes. Arman Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Prophet? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Tim. Uh, uh, one more. I'd just like one to say, uh, catalytic converters, yeah, I don't know if you know what those entail or not, but they contain a lot of precious metals inside those. So they're able to yeah. sell them pretty quick. So 
They're going to try to steal them, let them do it on their own. <laughs> and not from our city park. <laughs> yeah. Okay, item D is consideration of bids for a drop down gym divider curtain for the community center. Yes, sir. This is also a budgeted item. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, an automatic uh, with a hoist that raises and lets down a unit for us. It will change our venue at our community center. When I say venue, the people that we can rent it to or also what we can do to divide the courts into two different courts. Uh, as Terry knows, uh, coaching for years with the community center, if, if you don't have something to divide your court from the other court, you're too busy uh, competing with the other team practicing on the other side of the net. Uh, also, or the curtain, so to speak. Also, the uh, process of um, the, like the vinyl on the gym floor, uh, how that will change our venue to to uh, rent our community center out for different opportunities. And, you know, the, one of the things that, that best suit us is that all this is a part of our SAFE program. The SAFE program is where we presented to you guys the uh, same access point for everyone, same for everyone to come in and out. And again, uh, this is a part of that community center renovations to where the, um, the building is being renovated and this is a part of that program for renovation. So uh, the curtain is one of those essential items that we need uh, due to it divides the gym in two different courts. The other one's been there how long? Well, since Shannon Depew, and it, we put it up with a boat crank. So Shannon's probably 17 years, 18 years, he's not been with us. And so we have to try to use a boat crank to put it up. It takes two men. You got to put the cable, you got to put the curtain on, then you got to bar hug it, then you got to drag it across. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's a lot that goes along with it and this is essential to us. Uh, uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, this is again a part of that safe program that, that we, the renovations of our community center. Tim, I didn't see uh, any, any warranty information. What is the life expectancy of this? Well, the winch is probably going to be under a three-year warranty, but I would uh, I would say at least 20 years on the curtain. Okay. Uh, now, I will verify that. It'll either be 20 or 30, but it'll only be three on the electric winch. That's standard for that. But that can be replaced if it... Yes, because it's going to be in a situation to where we can get to it. Uh, it'll be out of the out of play of kids, but it'll be where our maintenance staff can get to it. And the cost is uh, you only have one bid. We only have one bid, AJ Sports, and uh, I believe it's a little over fifteen thousand dollars. Fifteen thousand. Uh, okay, I see it. Fifteen thousand two five seven and forty cents. All right. You've heard the presentation. What is the board's pleasure? I make a motion to uh, move forward with this purchase. So I see. Uh, yeah. my, my, my second again. Yeah. All right, we have a motion on the board then to approve the purchase of a motorized drop-down curtain for the City of Newport Community Center for fifteen thousand two hundred fifty-seven dollars and forty cents from AJ Sports Company. It has been properly seconded. Roll call, please. Yes. Alderman Knight? Yes. Alderman Odinger? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Vice Mayor Profit? Yes. Motion carried. Mayor, uh, I was telling Mr. Fincham that we hope to have a lot of others that put something on the agenda for bids next, next meeting because I'll be back at you with four more bids. And uh, James said, well, that's what you get for bringing them all at the at one time, but it's just the way that it's worked out. It is budgeted money, so, and thank you, Council. All right, the last item on our agenda is comments from citizens. Anyone wish to be heard? Uh, I that good new administrator of the hospital, right? Yes. Okay, why don't you stand up and introduce yourself? I, most of us don't know you, I don't think what we read in the paper. Good evening, I'm Scott Williams. I'm the new CEO at 
uh, Newport Medical Center. I just wanted to come and uh, be present at a council meeting and, and we'll visit from time to time. I'm originally from Johnson City. Uh, I've worked in healthcare since 1983 and uh, started here in January uh, of this year and really happy to be back in Northeast, uh, Northeast Tennessee. Uh, I purchased property in the county and hoping to start building this summer. So, we appreciate that hospital up there too because we hear a lot of good comments. Ours ranked one of the highest in the whole East Tennessee and everything. They appreciate that, okay? Well, that's it, yeah, and I'll pass that along to the staff because it's the frontline staff and the, the, the hard work that the staff does that really makes the difference up there. They really appreciate it. And one thing I do want to note is that our first COVID case was April the 10th of last year and today for the first time in over a year we have no COVID cases in the hospital so amen, uh, amen to that so I just wanted to say thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Sean Anderson, our town. And as I will mention that Scott, the first time I met him when he came to my office and introduced himself, well, he basically said that he was, he's a homer, he's here to stay, he doesn't want, he's not interested in going anywhere else, so we appreciate that, uh, that, that uh, uh, Scott, because we have, I think, since I've been, been back, we went, went through at least two other administrators, so thanks for being here and hope you you're going to stay for a long long time or at least until retirement <laughs> I, i've climbed all the ladders i want to climb thank you so I'm, I'm ready i'm ready to come home welcome Th to newport thank you any others wish to be heard okay hearing none we'll entertain a motion to adjourn second we've got a second we are adjourned <laughs>